Hello and welcome to Clipshortjud Movie Recap. Today I'll recap the story of a man who became the greatest con artist of all time. This film is based on the true story of Jordan Belfort. The Wolf of Wall Street is based on the same named autobiography written by Jordan Belfort in 2007. It gives Belfort's perspective on his time spent working as a stockbroker in New York City and how the broad Wall Street fraud and corruption that his business, Stratton Oakmont, engaged in finally led to his downfall. Jordan makes $22 million illegally in three hours after obtaining Steve Madden's IPO in 1993. This makes him and his firm even more of a target for the FBI. Jordan works with dishonest banker Jean-Jacques Sorrel to open a Swiss bank account in the name of Naomi's Aunt Emma, a British citizen who is outside the reach of American authorities, in order to hide his funds. Using his friend Brad Bodnick's wife and in-laws, who also have European passports, he smuggles the money into Switzerland. Jordan Belfort joins LF in 1987 as a stockbroker on Wall Street. Rothschild, a Mark Hanna employee. He is soon drawn into the drug-fueled stockbroker atmosphere and Hanna's conviction that the sole purpose of a broker is to enrich himself. After Black Monday, the biggest single-day stock market decline in history, Jordan quits his job and finds work at a boiler room trading house on Long Island that specialized in penny stocks. Jordan's aggressive pitching style and the hefty commissions let him amass a little fortune. Jordan becomes friends with Donny Azov, a neighbor, and the two start their own business. Jordan's strategies and salesmanship greatly contribute to the success of his pump-and-dump scheme, which involves inflating the price of a stock by making false, positive statements in order to sell it at an artificially inflated price. They recruit several of Jordan's friends, whom Jordan trains in the art of the hard sell. Those who were duped into buying at the inflated price are left with stock that is suddenly worth substantially less than what they paid when the scheme's perpetrators sell their overvalued stocks, which causes the price to drastically drop. Jordan disguises this in 1989 by giving the company the respectable-sounding moniker Stratton Oakmont. Numerous ambitious young financiers flock to his company following an expose in Forbes. Jordan experiences tremendous success and descends into a drug and prostitute fueled lifestyle. When his wife learns of his liaison with Naomi LaPaglia, Jordan gets rid of her and marries Naomi in 1991. The second FBI start looking into Stratton Oakmont in the meantime. After securing Steve Madden's IPO in 1993, Jordan makes $22 million illegally in three hours. This draws the FBI's attention to him and his business even more. Jordan creates a Swiss bank account in the name of Naomi's Aunt Emma, a British national who is out of the reach of American authorities, with crooked banker Jean-Jacques Sorrel to conceal his money. He smuggles the money into Switzerland using the wife and in-laws of his friend Brad Bodnick, who also have European passports. During a money exchange, Donnie and Brad get into a fight in front of everyone. Brad is then jailed, but Donnie manages to flee. Jordan finds that the FBI is tapping his phones through his private investigator. Jordan's father urges him to leave Stratton Oakmont and hide out while Jordan's attorney strikes a bargain to keep him out of jail out of concern for his son. However, Jordan can't bring himself to leave and convinces himself to stay in the middle of his farewell speech. When Jordan, Donnie, and their wives learn that Aunt Emma has passed away in 1996, they are on a boat trip to Italy. Jordan travels to Switzerland to create a false identity and preserve the account. He instructs the yacht's captain to cruise to Monaco in order to avoid border restrictions, but a storm causes the ship to capsize. Jordan interprets this as a sign from God to address his deteriorating drug addiction and makes an effort to sober up after their rescue when the plane sent to transport them to Geneva is damaged when a seagull flies into the engine. Because Sorrel, who is being held for a separate charge, told the FBI about Jordan in 1998, the FBI is able to apprehend Jordan. Jordan consents to compile evidence on his co-workers in exchange for leniency because the evidence against him is so overwhelming. Jordan is informed by Naomi that she is divorcing him and wants exclusive custody of their child and unborn son. After hitting Naomi in a fit of cocaine-fueled wrath, Jordan tries to flee with his daughter but smashes his car in the driveway. When the film ends, later, Jordan continues to wear a wire to work but gives Donnie a message of caution. When the FBI learns of this, Jordan is detained, and Stratton Oakmont is searched and closed down. Jordan broke his agreement, but in exchange for his testimony, 
he was given a reduced sentence of 36 months in a minimum security facility, and he served 22 months of that sentence before being freed in 2000. Jordan earns a living by facilitating sales techniques seminars after being freed. If you like my movie recap I would like to request it a shared and subscribe this channel.